Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. I've got something new from Viotech. Let's see what it is. All right, so for all of you viewers at home, which is pretty much everybody, this is a gaming monitor. It's a GNV30CBXA. Although it says 29 and a half inches, it's got 30 in the part number. So I'm just going to call it a 30 inch monitor. It is curved. And let's see, 1080p, so you got 2560 by 1080 on your resolution. 1800 curve radius, so that's 1800 millimeters or 1.8 meters. Up to 200 hertz on the refresh rate. You got your little bullseye there, your first person shooter, uh, FPS, RTS, and your low blue light capabilities. And that's about it on the box. So let's see what's inside. All right, looking at the components that are inside here, uh, other than the monitor itself. Uh, there's a user manual, power cable, and a display port cable. And then here's the base, and this is a cast, cast aluminum, all one piece. It's got some little rubber feet and one at each end over here like that. And then this is the vertical part of the support. And uh, this, does, this does raise and lower, which uh, it'll make more sense when the monitor is attached. But So you start by pop this little tab up, which it makes it easier to remove this fastener. And be careful because you've got some stuff here that's sort of loose so when you take this out you want to try to maintain that order there so what you do and you notice here there's a little slot a little curved slot and that is for this little piece right here that protrudes that goes into that little slot like this and that enables it to rotate but it has a stop at either end of the rotation. Now you want to be careful, you hold these two together and put this fastener in there. And then get that all the way screwed in there. And then this little tab piece here, you want to flip over to the side. So we snug that up. So we draw the vertical part here up into the base and then flip that down and you are good to go for that part of the assembly. I'll just set that over here and then we'll get the monitor itself attached. All right, so here is the monitor. It is curved. If we look at the back here, this is the face that's going to go up against the mount there. So you got some places here where the tabs insert and then this is the locking mechanism right here you can see when you push that in that's what releases the monitor from the mount so I'll get this connected here so we set it down over these tabs and then lock it in you sort of heard that click and you're done so that's pretty uh, that's pretty fast all right so let's look at some dimensions. So right now the monitor is at the maximum height. And uh, what you'll need to know is what this distance here is because sometimes you're trying to put the monitor in a tight space. So right now at the maximum height it is about 20, about 20 and a quarter. And when it's all the way down like that, the maximum height of the monitor is about 15 inches. But uh, the top here sticks up just a little, so the top of that is about 15 and three quarter. So the monitor is 15, so this sticks up just a little higher than the monitor. The gap here at the bottom, when it's all the way down, is about two and a quarter inches, just a little over two and a quarter. And when the monitor is all the way up, it is uh, about seven and three quarter. 
And here in a little bit, I'll post uh, the specifications so you can look at the numbers uh, on this monitor. But right now, we're just sort of looking at the exterior features. So looking at the back, now this base here, this is, this is a plastic cover. And again, the foot here is uh, a cast aluminum. And then you've got this hole here for your cable management. So if you need to run your cables through there, you can do that to sort of clean that up a little. But looking at the back of the monitor, got the nice Viotech logo sort of silk screened on there. Uh, this ring here lights up and we'll see that here in a little bit. Uh, across the bottom, we've got some red inserts. In fact, let me move the camera a little closer so you can see that. So those are the inserts there that sort of uh, give it a little zing. And there's some slots right here, some vented sections to allow air in. And we've got some vents at the top to let any heat out. We've got a speaker. I'm not sure if this one has speakers or not. We'll find out. It looks like uh, at least there's some holes there for a speaker. These are your controls over here for your on-screen menu so you can navigate. And then on this side, you've got your little lock right there if you want to lock your monitor so that it can't wander off on you. Got a nice sort of a graphic that's in the actual plastic itself. And then let's see the IO here or the connections. Having a hard time keeping this thing in focus today. All right, so we've got HDMI ports one, uh, two, and three, but this is 1.4, 1.4, and 2.0 for, I'm sorry, HDMI one, two, and three. So they actually go this way from right to left. In the numbering and then over here there is a display port sort of tucked up under there and here is your power where you plug the power in and then over here you've got audio out and like I sort of showed earlier this does swivel right and left if you need to do that for the monitor to be more viewable I guess if you got some people sitting off to the side and you want to swivel it over there you can of course we know that it raises and lowers and it also tilts so you've got some tilt here. Now this is brand new, so sometimes this stuff is a little, a little stiff. There we go. Of course, you want this stiff. You don't, you know, you want this thing to, when you move it into position, you want it to stay there. Yeah, of course, it's a little easier going down than, than up, but it's getting actually a little easier there as I, as I do it. Of course, now I got fingerprints all over it, so I'll have to clean that off. Pretty much have a zero bezel. I mean, there's just a little bit here on the sides and across the top, not much. So it's not a bad looking monitor. So the next thing I'll do is get it powered up. Of course, the nice thing with the thin bezel like that, you get a really nice looking monitor, but when you're trying to move them around, it's so easy to get your fingers on there. Uh, the older monitors used to have like an inch wide bezel all the way around, so you could sort of grip on that. But I've got some Vivitar out. Uh, alcohol and ammonia free LCD cleaner and I try not to spray that directly on the monitor I put just a little bit on the on the cleaning cloth here and then I wipe that very gently very gently there we go all right all right so now we'll get the power cord plugged in and we should see if it's like my other Viotech monitor, we should see a splash screen. There it is. Yep. And since I don't have the DisplayPort cable hooked up just yet, it should say some kind of a message. Yeah, no signal. All right. So we'll get this plugged in to the DisplayPort, which is right there. And then I'll get the other end plugged into my graphics card. And we should see something here in a moment. There we go. So the system boots up just fine. And there we go. So before you get too far ahead of yourself, uh, it is a good idea to go through your 
user manual here and become familiar with the functionality. So oh, that's what that's called. So this piece here, vertical support is called a stand stem. That's what that is. Okay. So it's good to go through and look at your functions. Those are your menu control buttons and how they function. Of course, there's your port layout. Shows you how to assemble it. Of course, that's really pretty easy. This shows you your uh, adjustments, swivel, tilt, vertical adjustment. And uh, this shows you, you can actually mount this on a different type of stand or on the wall also if you want. Basic operations, how to uh, navigate through your on-screen display. And there we go. Went to sleep on me. And these are all of your on-screen functions right there. So like I said, good idea to kind of go through it before you get too excited. Hard to do when you get a new monitor. You want to plug it in and start gaming. But try to take some time to go through your manual. Quick note here on display port cables. If you've never used one, uh, when you plug them in, you don't have to do anything. You just push them in. And these little tabs, these locking tabs, will, will uh, lock this cable into position and to remove it you have to push this little button here and the little tabs there retract as you can see uh, you have to do that in order to take the cable out if you don't you'll have one heck of a time and you may damage something so just remember to remove it you have to push that in so here I am at the Viotech website and I remember when Viotech first started uh, not too long ago just a few years ago uh, they had just a handful of monitors and since then they've really gained some notoriety and made a name for themselves and you can see they have quite a selection now of monitors uh, especially compared to when they first started they didn't have very many just a handful so they go all the way up to this 49 inch monster where is it up here at the top somewhere in here 34 inch and up yeah this thing here is a beast but we're not looking at that today. We are looking at, I see I'm a little confused. It says 27 to 29 or 30 to 32. So let's see where this one falls in. So it falls right here. It says 30 inch. So this is the GNV 30 CBXA. A couple of things on the back here I want to point out. So you can see the red ring of LEDs. Sort of a nice feature, although you can't really see it when you're sitting in front of the monitor, but uh, this can be disabled before I forget to mention it uh, through the on-screen display So if you want to turn this off, you can turn it off and uh, It's no problem And it's fairly intense with all the lights on in the room here. It sort of washes it out a little bit again That's what it looks like and these little inserts down here Some of you might want to know those are just plastic inserts. Those are not LED uh, Lights or anything like that. They're just red plastic inserts and I also confirmed these are not actual speakers. They may be for some other monitor that shares this housing, but uh, these are not actual speakers. Now, another interesting thing is I'm using uh, an NVIDIA graphics card. So this is the GeForce RTX. This is a 3070 Ti. So that allows me to get into the NVIDIA control panel. And what I can do here, you can see on the setup G-Sync, uh, it shows that it I can enable the G-Sync or G-Sync compatible. I would think it would say compatibility, but either way, so I can set that up. And then I also have the ability uh, to go in here and change the resolution. So the default resolution is 2560 by 1080, but I can also go over here and adjust the refresh rate. Now the default when I fired it up was 60 Hertz. So I can get into the control panel here and I can change it to 200, which is the maximum for this monitor and I just realized there's a small kind of hard to see I don't know if I can really get in there if you look right there there's a little tiny green like a power LED so when you're sitting in front of the monitor you can tell if it's powered on or not so my guess is if I come back here and push the power button that goes out yep and then we'll Turn it back on and yep just a little tiny green power LED 
and the monitor fires back up. And I have to say, I just, you know, the more I play around with the adjustability here, I really like that. Now, most of the time when you set your monitor up, you get it adjusted the way you like it. You pretty much just leave it there. You don't really change it too often. But where this comes in handy is if you've got different people of different heights using the monitor. So you have a short person that uses it and they, they want to adjust it down a little like this maybe, and you have a tall person who needs it up a little higher, uh, you have that ability. And then again, this one also swivels left to right. But that is just such a nice feature. And you know, after you have a monitor that has a stand that is not adjustable, you don't think too much about it, but once you have that ability, very nice. So things have changed over the years with the different panel types. This model right here, I just finished reviewing. It is the GF127DBXA, the 27 inch flat panel gaming monitor. You can check out the review for that. But this one is an IPS or in-plane switching screen. They used to be known for having uh, pretty good color reproduction, but the response time was a little slow. Now that's changed over the years. Of course, the colors are still really good and they pop, but the response times have gotten a lot better on an IPS monitor. Now, the monitor we're looking at today, this one is a VA or vertical alignment. And these typically uh, had really good response times, but the color reproduction wasn't quite there and you had uh, issues with viewing angles. So unless you were looking at it dead on, if you look at it from the side uh, or from the top, uh, your colors just all changed and they weren't that good. But again, like I said, these have gotten way better. The, the viewing angle is really not even an issue anymore. The color reproduction is maybe not quite as good as an IPS, but it's still really good. And the pricing right now, let me zoom in just a little. This one lists for $366, but right now it is on sale for $299.99. So uh, that looks to be a pretty good deal for a monitor this size uh, with this feature set. And going over the general features here real quick. So we've got, uh, again, the 2560 by 1080p resolution, uh, lightning fast 200 hertz on the refresh rate. It is adaptive sync with LFC, compatible with G-Sync and FreeSync, activate overdrive for 45% increase in responsiveness. Uh, let's see, you've got adaptive sync for liquid smooth gameplay, ergonomic 1800R curvature, so you have a semi-aggressive curvature there. You can get them uh, tighter than that, but 1800 seems to be uh, a pretty good uh, curvature there. Let's see, no dead pixels. So the Biotech Curve gaming monitors are protected by their zero tolerance dead pixel policy and a three year limited warranty. And it has U uh, US, customer US customer service support 100%. A few of the basic specs here though, it is 200 Hertz, which is screaming fast. Uh, the resolution here is not listed properly. That's just a typo. It should be 2560 by 1080 P not 1440. Uh, it is vertical alignment. There are no speakers. It is Visa mountable 100 by 100. And the other thing here is the dot pitch right there. 0.2697 by 0.2697. All right, so I'll fire up a little Titanfall here. And yeah, you can make fun of me for how, <laughs> how much I'm not very good at it. And the other thing I'll do is I'm going to turn the room lights off so that we don't have any interference from any external lighting here. All right, so here we go. So first impression is the colors don't look bad. They are not quite as bright as what I saw on the monitor I looked at yesterday. I'm not saying that's bad, but that is typical of a VA or vertical alignment screen. And you know, the specs are what they are, but at the end of the day, it really comes down to how well does the monitor perform for the games that you like to play. And of course, there's a lot of subjectivity in there. Uh, you know, you'll read a, a monitor 
review where someone will talk about how great a monitor is and someone else will say this this monitor really sucks don't buy it blah 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 but so far this thing is really pretty smooth I don't see any anything that makes me uh, too concerned I do have it at the 200 Hertz whoa 200 Hertz refresh rate and you know I've been playing this game since it came out I I just can't seem to get away from it I just always really enjoyed this game so anyway uh, I guess I like everything that I see here and yeah, I noticed the color isn't quite as intense, but it doesn't bother me. I would be perfectly fine using this as my daily driver or just playing uh, games from time to time. I think it would be fine either way. You know, had I not looked at that other monitor yesterday and reviewed it, I don't know that I would have even thought anything about the coloring on this one. So, I think this is a pretty good monitor. I like it. Okay, so that sort of gives you an idea of, uh, you know, gameplay. Again, that's just one game, so that's not really representative of how all games uh, will play. And a lot of it has to do with, of course, how much horsepower you've got in your graphics card. So, let's take a quick look at some of the on-screen uh, display options here. So, around the back again, the buttons. To control that so let's see if I hit this one so this one is your uh, the source so auto source means it'll just detect whatever's plugged in but you got display port oops and your HDMI options also so the top button on the back here you can sort of cycle through all of your different modes so whoops hit the wrong one so multi-window, this is where you, uh, you go into your picture-in-picture -picture and multiple inputs, which I only have one input. And you can see right here it shows it's 200 hertz. Now when I first turned the monitor on and I got into the display, uh, it defaulted to 60 hertz. So you have to go in and change that yourself. But we'll come down here and... So there's your color. You can change your color temperature, your on-screen display, whether you want this, you know, the center of the screen, top, bottom your timeout which is how many seconds before it goes off without hitting a button here's your setup now you notice the audio source is grayed out because there are no speakers and let's see here's your low blue light mode let's see if I can get into these so there's your aspect ratio I'll leave it in widescreen mode low blue light I have it in low mode response time uh, I've got that on I believe that's to the, the fastest response time available to the monitor there's your free sync mode I have that turned on this is where you can turn off the uh, that red ring on the back the uh, red LEDs and let's see back out of this the very bottom one I think we looked at that already whoops keep hitting the wrong button yeah the multi-window mode so that's about all there is to this and there's one other thing here I almost skipped over it's the uh, crosshair and the timer menu now I've tried using the crosshairs before and it's just not anything that I 
personally like. So there's the green crosshair. I mean, you might like it, but you can cycle through the different crosshairs there. But again, that's just not quite my uh, to my liking. So this over here is the timer mode. So when we enter that, you basically have uh, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 90 minutes. And it will put a little display. I'll just select the 10 here. Let's see. Hit the 10, and then you can select the position on the screen. We'll just go with that one. And you have to move the camera over here. There you go. At the top right, you can see right there, there's a little timer. And again, I can move that to different places on the screen, but that's just a little timer and it will count down. And let's see, I can take that off right there and exit. So uh, overall, I really like the monitor, the gameplay on it. And again, I only played one game, but the gameplay on it between this one and the 27 inch that I reviewed uh, actually just yesterday and I'll post the link on uh, in the description so you can like check out the two different monitors but anyway um, gameplay was about the same the only real difference between this and the other monitor uh, was really just the colors popped a little more on the other monitor but like I said uh, I'm not knocking the colors on this one I'm just saying they're not quite as vivid but that's a VA or a vertical alignment monitor so that's sort of what you get with that type of a monitor it's not bad it's just a little different so overall, again, the pricing on this, uh, you can see here, what are we at, $299 on sale. I think that's a, a really decent price for a widescreen curved monitor like this with uh, all the adjustments. Uh, I really like it. So uh, I don't normally give out too many Overclockers Club uh, Editor's Choice Awards, but I would give this one also an Editor's Choice Award. Something else to keep in mind when you're building your system, you know, it's real easy to get excited about your graphics card and your motherboard and you dump a lot of money into that. And that's fine. But uh, then you end up going to look for a monitor because no matter how good your graphics card is, if your monitor isn't very good, you know, it's just not going to work out. So just make sure you don't cheap out on your monitor. Make sure you sort of budget enough money to uh, invest in a nice monitor. So this is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.